Whenever I head out to do a car shoot at night time, I always take three essential pieces of gear. A tripod, a light bar, and a prime lens. The reason I want those three pieces of gear is because no matter what situation or environment I'm in, I know I can capture a good photo. And I think that's really important. As long as you've got those three fundamentals, you cannot take a bad photo wherever you are, whatever the location, you have the tools to be able to get the shot you want. I never go out with an entire plan. I go out with a loose idea and keep my mind open because you never know what you're gonna find and whether or not the locations you've got saved are gonna work out the way you want them to. Another thing I keep in mind is I know that the concepts I want are not gonna be entirely possible unless I use Photoshop or manipulating the photos in a way that I want to get my final image. And I think as creators, it's really important to try and get those different types of styles, something different than what other people are gonna get. It means that you can go to generic locations and turn that location into something different. And in this video, I'll show you my kind of process and how I go about doing that. So we've arrived at the first location and one of the things I always look for when I'm doing car photography is reflections. And that can be done with water, it can be done with mirrors, it can be done with glass. But where we are now is a car park on top of um, Moore Park Car Park, Westfield, if you want to come here. It's got a really good skyline view and I thought we'd be able to get some nice 85 shots. However, the lights are off, but I do have this uh, this light, which I might be able to use with some light painting, lighting up the, the car, but we'll get to that. I'm going to go and position the car, get it into space, get it where I want and get the right shot. Okay, so like I was just saying, the main focus here was I wanted to shoot the car with reflections and I was hoping the lights would be on. Uh, the reason I wanted the lights on is because it meant that I wouldn't have to push the ISO so high. And yes, I could lock off the camera, set up the tripod, use the, the light bar and get a really nice detailed shot with a higher f-stop. But I decided I wanted to not do that here and just use the 85 f1.4, push the ISO and just get some nice reflections with the puddles. And the kind of like main feature of this car that I absolutely love for like photography is the, the back of light. The back light is like incredible. It's like this bar of red. It just speaks for itself. And I didn't want to like lose that mood. And with the editing, as you can see on the screen, so when you have these situations where you don't have like a tripod or you can't lock it off or you have to shoot at a high ISO, lean into the edit, use the grain wood, use the dark situation to tell more of a story, make it more moody. I'm gonna to head to the next location, see if the, uh, the lighting's a little bit better, and we'll go from there. Now, whenever I'm going location to location, I'm thinking about that last place I was just in, and I'm mentally editing the photo already and how I want that concept to come to life. Now, for that first location, what I wanted to do is I wanted to replace this guy to have a moon with some clouds, and I wanted to make it kind of moody. So I wanted to lean into the fact that I was just using a prime with the light that I had available to me and pulled everything out else out in post, which gives it kind of like this nice natural night feel instead of kind of light painting and, and making it kind of nighttime and daytime at the same time. I have these thoughts all the time, but what I want to do in the next location is it's kind of this ramp. And I have this idea that I want to use the lights and get this kind of like uh, vertical shot It'll make sense when we get there, but these are the thoughts that I have whenever I'm like going location to location. I'm thinking about what I've just shot, how I'm gonna edit it, and where I'm going next, and how I'm gonna shoot the next location. So we came to the second location, and although it's a really good location for daytime, um, because you have these really nice white buildings, got this really cool sloping ramp, which works really well. It just doesn't work at night as well as I hoped. I was hoping these lights behind me, the ones that are illuminating me now, would be more kind of down because if I remember rightly when I walked past I thought the lights were further down on the ramp um, and I thought it was going to illuminate anyway it doesn't matter it looks good the shots that I've got you can see on the screen again I've lent into that vibe lent into the scenario that I'm in and I've worked with it with the edit and made it look really good anyway and I'm happy with the shots it's just not what I anticipated and I think you'll find that's a lot what happens when you go out and you shoot you always end up having to adapt and change to the settings and scenarios that you're in. And when you learn to do that, you become a better photographer. For me personally, I don't mind being in a situation like this because I know that I can lean into the edits, I can make the work work for me, if that makes sense. And I think that's what you have to learn to do when you're going out and creating, is making the scenario work 
for you regardless of what happens. We've got to the next spot. I went to a couple of other spots that were on the list of places I wanted to go to, but they were closed off and security there couldn't go anyway. One of those things. So we're trying to find somewhere nice to go to kind of seal off this video, close off this video. We've got one more place that I'm going to go after this, um, but this is the kind of like the one but last location, which is in Barangaroo. Now in Barangaroo, you have this really cool structure, as you can see, look at this. And I think it'll be quite a cool shot to have the car in front of this and maybe with the super wide 12 mil, it'll look really nice. Okay, so what I've done here is I've used my wallet, my phone to, and the lens cap to give me a nice stable surface. So now the frame is gonna be nice and stable. We've got it locked off without using a tripod. It's in manual focus. We've got this lovely foreground with the, uh, the, um, the seeds and then the red of the car with the contrast of the blue in the background looks really nice. You can kind of see an example of it on the back of the screen if it's not too blown out. Um, but it's looking really nice and I can't wait to edit this one actually, it looks really nice. Um, this might be the last location, um, it might not be, we'll see how we go. I'm going to get a couple more shots uh, in the surrounding area and we'll go from there. Okay, taxi going for the frame, holding down that shutter. Now, with the taxis, it's nicer with it going through the frame from right to left because you get the red lights and obviously it's the same color as the car, so it looks really nice. Okay, I think I'm actually really happy with uh, the one you can see on the screen. It turned out pretty good. Happy with that. We're gonna get a couple more shots. Uh, left hand down a bit. Yeah, left hand down a bit, yeah. 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 Take your foot off your brake. Take your foot off the brake. You say it's off? Yeah, yeah, thank you. No, that's all right, just stay there. So I'm just getting a shot of the car in the center of the road. Yeah, it's fine. Okay, so the shot that you can see on the screen was shot at f1.4, 40th of a second, ISO 400. And I think you'll agree, it turned out really good. I've had to do a little bit of photoshopping, just moving the white lines um, just between the, the, uh, the back wheels of the car, just so it looks nicer. Whenever you go out and shoot, you're always going to run into hurdles. There's always going to be setbacks and there's always going to be things you have to overcome. Whether you're going out to shoot a car, a subject, or street photography, there's always something that you, that's going to crop up. And as a photographer, it's up to us to adjust. It's up to us to overcome those hurdles and come away with something creative. This evening, I said about going out with three essential items. And for me, those three essential items are a guaranteed way to overcome any obstacles that I'm going to come across, especially going out to shoot car photography. So a tripod, a light, and a prime lens. Those three things are going to enable me to capture the content I want to if I get into a situation that I need to adapt to. So a tripod and a light will allow me to take those long exposure shots if I need to, and a tripod is gonna give me that stable surface, the light is gonna give me something extra to work with, and then the prime lens is gonna give me that wider aperture to give me more light into the lens, especially at nighttime. On top of that, the 85 mil is gonna give me a lovely compression, meaning that the background is gonna be coming closer to the subject, giving a nice overall image. Now, in order to create those concepts, I have used Photoshop. Using Photoshop has allowed me to create the ideas that I had in my head. If I had an endless budget, endless time, and no time restraints or any restraints at all, then I would wait for the correct situation. So the correct lighting, the correct clouds, the correct moon. But we don't live in an ideal world, and sometimes you have to create the reality that you want. And a lot of people are against using Photoshop, but I don't see why. If you have a concept in your head and you want to try and create the thing you want to create, we're artists. Go out and create that concept. Go out and just enjoy the process, whether that's street, portrait, car, automotive, whatever you want to shoot. Anything you want to create, go out and just do it. We're going to have a look at the hashtag Optical Wonder where you can show me the content you're creating and in turn inspire me and inspire others. 
Okay, the hashtag is up to 642,000 posts and we're gonna go down on the most recent and just select a few that catch my eye. First one here is a nice street shot, black and white. One from Sean Sebis, Serbis, sorry if I got your name wrong. Another street shot here, which is really nice. I love the silhouette. Um, going down a little bit more, we'll do a little bit of a scroll because we uh, it's been a while since I've done this. Uh, this one here, another street shot, love the colors, really love that moody vibe. Um, this simplistic uh, sunrise or sunset shot, I really like. Um, let's have a look a bit more. Panning shot there of somebody on a scooter. And another panning shot of somebody on a bike. Let's have a look, let's have a look. Uh, street shot, umbrella, love the, like the rain as well, that's nice. Uh, this one here, the vibe is really nice. There's some rain coming down, nice little uh, variation in the set. Panning shot of this car, which is really nice. That's really in focus, nice shot. And we'll do one more, we'll go with this set here, which is really nice. Love the, uh, love the vibe, love the uh, aesthetics. We'll have a quick look actually at the top page as well. Um, we'll go here and we'll just grab one from here. This street shot's really nice. Now, if you do want to get featured on this channel, you can use the hashtag Optical Wonder over on Instagram. Just throw it in the caption whenever you upload. Now, a little bit of an update. My cat Omi has arrived here in Australia. He's doing okay, but I'm going to do a video on that entire process because it's been incredibly stressful. Um, and it's been incredible. Anyway, I'll, I'll do a whole video on that. If you want to see that, subscribe, etc., etc. Um, the photos that I took today, actually, I was very happy with. They're on the screen again if you'd like to have a look at them. And I'm going to be posting them over on Instagram if you want to come and have a further look. And maybe follow me, come and say hello, send me a DM. Any questions, I answer everybody that sends me a message. So feel free to come over and do that. Subscribe, notification bell, all of that stuff. Create more, stress less. And of course, I'll see you in the next one.